She's out there somewhere, and we need her. We need to find her. We still need searchers. We still need the flyers. And this is a sad day, really, you know? But I think it was inevitable. You never know what tips could come in when people see that today. You just always have to have hope that somebody knows something and that somebody will remember and call. I hope they do. Hey, Dad. Um, it's about 8.40. It's Michelle on Wednesday morning. I know that you're at work, but call me when um, you have lunch or you have break or at the end of your day. Brad Parker didn't know it at the time, but soon he would realize this was the last time he would hear his daughter's voice because the next day, Michelle Parker disappeared. I answer my phone every day and I'm waiting for that one phone call to say they found Michelle. Hello all and welcome back to Mind Juice. This episode marks the channel's first step away from the Idaho 4 coverage, which I do intend on continuing to cover up to and throughout its entirety, but only when I feel I can add something new and or insightful to the case. With that said, I have elected Michelle Parker to be the channel's first featured non-current investigative deep dive case. She's a beautiful mother of three. Michelle Parker went missing sometime after 4 p.m. on Thursday evening on a thursday evening in november 2011. her last known place position was at her ex-fiance dale smith's residence as she was dropping her twins off with him shared custody as we were soon to learn dale and michelle shared a toxic fatal attraction with one another for a little over five years now leading up and to going missing they had been in court for a custody battle back in 2009 Michelle also having previously filed a restraining order against him for, as she quoted, having an outburst in front of the kids, only to have it rejected by a judge. Further, the day she went missing marked the day a People's Court episode first aired on national television where she and Dale appeared regarding a civil suit wherein I believe Dale was suing for monetary damages after Michelle had allegedly tossed the ring causing damage amidst one of their toxic arguments. Now, Dale Smith, her ex-fiance, is the prime suspect, being the only one verbalized to the public as such. In my own opinion, he is responsible. Yet, I don't believe they, the prosecutors that is, have enough to prove or bring charges. Circumstantial is there, yet Michelle is still missing, having yet to be found. So too is her silver cross necklace, she was said to have been wearing at the time she went missing. I believe deep down someday, someone, somewhere, will find that necklace and Michelle. Further, I am drawn towards Michelle's case as it did not get as much national media attention or coverage as did Casey Anthony or Trayvon Martin, with Michelle's case happening smack dab in between the both of them, time-wise. Casey's trial finishing up the previous spring and then Trayvon incident happening only a few months later, February of 2012, after Michelle went missing. Now what's the similarity between all three? They all happened in the same area, in the city of Orlando. Now, I do believe law enforcement investigation had and do have a pretty good circumstantial case on the prime suspect, Dale Smith, her ex-fiance, yet didn't and don't have enough. Michelle is still missing. There's not enough evidence to go forward with charges. Remember. You only got one shot to prosecute, double jeopardy. In this episode, I will briefly provide a synopsis of the case, discussing what are known to be the surrounding events leading up to her going missing, known facts, in order to provide some understanding and context for those of you who aren't familiar with the case, or consider it just a small recap for those of you that are. Once that groundwork is laid, I want to present to you some rationale and hypothesis. Remember, these are my opinions not meant to be intended as anything but. Anybody that I pin suspicion on is based on the facts and the evidence, okay? Further, I believe that I have dug up and developed some legitimate points to ponder ut utilizing Google Earth maps that may hopefully shed light on the case or raise awareness towards its resolution once again or at least create some conversation. You never know. Her family deserves closure. With that said, I do believe that Dale Smith committed the initial crime 
in his driveway of residence in her H3. I will provide sound rationale for this belief, where and when, her, such as where and when her cell phone was found, believed to last ping be used, and further, how and why I also believe that the circumstances and evidence in this case points a varying, alarming red flag at the man we know as Dale Smith. Why was the sticker glow that represented her business that was on the back of her Hummer removed? Why was Dale so free and confident to allow investigators and the bloodhounds in to search his residence the next day? Who was the one driving the stickerless black Hummer H3 spotted on cam at 8.55 p.m., less than a mile from away, less than a mile away from where it was eventually found the next day? Why was her phone found off a bridge in water at Belle Isle? Where is Michelle? Buckle up, fam. Here comes the mind juice. Cheers. If you like the content, please, please go ahead and give that a thumbs up, a friendly nudge for good luck, and double down and hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. From Michelle and her family, let's get into it. On November 17, 2011, Michelle Parker dropped her three and a half year old twins off at their father's house. It was something that she had done dozens of times before, but this day was different because she didn't make it home to meet her 11 year old son as he got home from school. Her family became worried when she didn't answer their calls and her whereabouts even more suspicious when she didn't show up for a bartending shift at a Sanford bar that night. These litigants were together for five years, engaged with twins. That same Thursday afternoon, Michelle Parker and her ex-fiance were on this episode of The People's Court. The court battle was over a $5,000 ring that Parker tossed after a fight with Dale Smith. In the episode, the couple hurled accusations at each other and fought nastily. A court reporter called their relationship a fatal attraction. Was this just coincidence or a clue? It's pretty malicious and vindictive, and he's a mean person, especially when he's been drinking. Any of the problems that we've ever had, it's always been alcohol-related. She threw the ring, and it bounced over the railing and down nine floors. It's been a, a hell of a roller coaster ride, and it's poison, and we're done. When she left the salon, she ran an errand for me. I needed color. She went to the store, brought it back, went out the door, turned around, and I said something to her, I said, oh my God, I said, it's almost, I don't know, one o'clock or two o'clock. I think that people's court thing is airing today. And she said, I don't ever want to see it. It was the most humiliating day of my life. I don't care. Parker had only been gone for a few hours, but her family was already worried. So her brother Dustin texted her around 4.30 p.m. that afternoon to ask her where she was. He got an immediate response, just one word, Waterford. It suggested she may be in Waterford Lakes on Orlando's east side, but that just didn't make sense to her family. I called Dale, his mom, and she said what? Well, she said, I asked her if Dale was there. Um, I needed to talk to him. I need to talk to Michelle. I need to talk to Dale. At that time, he was home, and he came right to the phone. He was at his house. He was at his so house. she called him to tell him that. Yeah. He said that he had been at his dad's warehouse, and I said, "Listen, Michelle's Michelle's not at work. Michelle's not answering her phone. Michelle's not home. Michelle's not home. Something's happened to Michelle." He goes, "Uh," she said, she was going shopping or something. So then he said, "I think she was going to uh, Waterford." He did. What was on the cell phone? The one word that was on the cell phone. When her brother texted her, said, where are you at? I didn't know that at the time, but connect those dots. He said to you. He said to me, she said she was going shopping or something uh, water, at water, Waterford. Because when she left my salon, she said, I'm so tired. I just want to go home and take a nap. I'm going to drop off the babies. I'm going to go home and take a nap. Waterford. Now, it's easy to listen along, but let's pause the story and visualize up into this point for a second. In this segment, let's focus on the dark navy blue points on the map. Given what you just heard, along with some research done on this end, scouring endless articles, reviewing countless news updates, November 17, 2011, 
this is what we know to begin. First off, Michelle has witnessed visiting a KFC, which I'll show you on the map, in Castleberry, Fern Park, Florida, around 12.22 p.m. Further, it is also stated in an article about this video, this was approximately three hours before she was set to drop her twins off with Dale. So, between 4 and 4.30 p.m., keep that in mind. Then, according to her mom, after going to KFC, she ran a few errands, stopping to get some color or other hair products, to then return to Strand Salon, where her mother had her place of business. While visiting with her mom, as you heard, Yvonne mentions bringing it up to Michelle that today was the day her appearance on People's Court with her ex-fiance was set to air on national television. Although it was previously recorded during the summer months, only coming to national airwaves that November 17th. Now, this is where things get spicy. She told her mom she was going home to take a nap before having to drop her kids off at Dale's and then further having a bartending shift later in the evening at the barn. I believe at 7.30, 8.30 p.m. It's not really important. Also important to note, Michelle has three kids, the twins she shares with Dale and a son whom was 11 at the time from a previous relationship. After leaving her mother's salon between 1 and 2 p.m., she said she was going to take a nap. A couple hours go by, her son arrived home from school only to not find Michelle at home. This was the first red flag found by her mother. Something wasn't right. Michelle's brother thus decided to text her between 426 and 430. Remember, this would have been just after she would have been set to drop the kids off with Dale. He says, hey, where you at? Of which Michelle or Michelle's phone responds to stating with one word, which the mom states is out of character, Waterford. As we learn, separate and apart, the mother came up with a lie to get Dale to talk to her on the phone, wherein he also stated that she, Michelle, had told him she was going shopping in um, Waterford. Up until this point, Michelle had told her mom, after visiting her salon between 1 and 2 p.m., she was going to take a nap. A couple hours go by, her son arrives home, no Michelle. Michelle's brother receives a response from Michelle with the one word, Waterford. Separate and apart, Dale told Michelle's mom on the phone, oh yeah, I think she said she was going shopping in uh, Waterford. So, Michelle, via text, suggests she is in Waterford. And then separate and apart from, Dale informs Yvonne via phone she was headed shopping in Waterford. Which I will point out on the map as well because I do believe Waterford's geographical location is suggested with intent by Dale. All a part of his plan to lead the family and eventually investigators in the wrong direction. It's no coincidence that Michelle's phone texted one word Waterford and then separate and apart on the phone with Yvonne, Dale suggests that Michelle told him she was going to Waterford. In my opinion, she never went to Waterford. It was all a cover. The family began to panic. Things were not adding up. Now, as you will see, or many of you may already know, Dale Smith has been the lead suspect in this case her ex-fiance. In fact, Michelle's family even went so far as to file a wrongful death suit against him in 2013, however quickly retracted said movement due to a prosecutor's advice for what would have been a lack of proof or basis to claim such, within the eyes of the court to win the judgment. I personally have tried everything to be open-minded, considering alternatives, but given the following pieces of evidence and knowledge, as I will show you after this quick comment, Dale Smith I believe is responsible for what happened to Michelle Parker. However, law enforcement just doesn't have enough. Albeit plenty of circumstantial evidence, they do not have enough to bring charges for his fault. Remember, you only have one shot, double jeopardy. And trying him, it has to be a much stronger basis of proof to hold him responsible. She remains missing. Now, in my heart, I believe it is still possible, and I'll show you how. Geographically, I believe I have narrowed down a particular area, direction, where Michelle may be. Let me present to you my reasoning and logic, then I'll show it to you. Number one, her phone being found on December 9th, 2011, in Bella Isle, 
found directly between Dale's residence and his parents' place of residence. Important to also note here, I saw an article. Her phone was believed to have been last sending signals to the cell tower on or working at approximately 8 p.m. that evening, November 17th. In my opinion, this is when the phone went into the water, 8 p.m. Number two, where her vehicle was found at and what time it was spotted on the camera, as you will see, 8.55 p.m. Number three, the fact her business decal glow was removed from the vehicle. This is the episode's true mind juice. Buckle up. I hope you have stayed with me this far. Orlando police found her Hummer at a condo complex near the mall at Millennia, but that company logo had been scraped off. The car was found quickly, which we thought would be so helpful in this situation, but it has not been helpful to you? I can't answer that. Why? Because I, 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 I'm not going to lie to you. There, there may be something there. There may not be something there, but I need to keep that. Is there some evidence, do you believe in this case, that if you got a confession, if you found her, um, if, if there was an eyewitness, that you could finally close this? In every homicide and missing person case, there's always one or two items that the detective will, will hold on back, will hold back on. Stuff that we do not release to the media, stuff that the media ne never finds out about. We always hold on to one or two cases, one or two points to keep that information so that if we get a confession or if we get an, an eyewitness, we can collaborate that information as being true or false information based on one or two key pieces of information. Every case should have those one or two points that, that they hold back on. So is that a yes? That's a yes. Is that a yes? That's a yes. So is that a yes? That's a yes. Search after search after search provided no clues that her family continued to plead to the public for their help. The best thing I can do is to do what we're doing right now. Just keep telling people, we need your help. We need your help. This girl's missing. We need everybody's help to find her. You know, it's a needle in the haystack. It was 11 days after Michelle Parker went missing when then Orlando Police Chief Paul Rooney announced this. He is our primary suspect. There are no other suspects that I'm aware of. Represented Smith in those initial weeks sat down with us. When law enforcement wanted to speak to him, he let them in his, his, his residence. He let them investigate from top to bottom. Anything they requested. Residence. He let them investigate from top to bottom. Anything they requested, he turned over in his, his, his residence. He let them investigate from top to bottom. Anything they requested, he turned over on his, his residence. He let them investigate from top to bottom. Anything they requested, he turned over voluntarily. The car was found quickly, which we thought would be so helpful in this situation, but it has not been helpful to you? I can't answer that. Why? Is there some evidence, do you believe in this case, that if you got a confession, if you found her, um, if, if there was an eyewitness, that you could finally close this? So is that a yes? That's a yes. Now, we see Detective Michael Fields here, who took over the case, and he's asked whether or not the Hummer is a lead piece of evidence. He says, I'm not going to say whether it is or not. It could be, it could not be. Well, to me, it is. Because if it wasn't, it wouldn't be that hard to defend. The fact that he can't elaborate and go into it, it is. Okay? Further proof? Here we go. The reporter says, is there any evidence that if you had something else, a confession, that could help you close this case. The reporter then asks, is that a yes? He goes, that's a yes. It's the Hummer. Don't believe me? When Mark Najem, his attorney, references how easily Dale allowed investigators into his home, how easily Dale allowed investigators to search this, to search that. No issues. It's because he killed her in her vehicle. She may have went inside to drop the kids off, but then at some point had to get back in her Hummer to leave, right? Dale likely went out to the vehicle. This is where the act was done. That Hummer has evidence of the scene, 
blood, body, guaranteed. This is why the sticker was removed and the vehicle was hidden. It contained the scene. They just don't have Michelle. They don't have her body. They can't prove Dale did it and he was in it. All the dirty deeds happen within Michelle's Hummer. There's a substantial amount of circumstantial evidence that shows that Dale Smith could have been involved. What makes that case so hard? That we can't find her. Do you think Michelle Parker could still be alive? No. You don't? No. Do you think Michelle Parker could still be alive? No. You don't? No. You don't. Now, none of this is intended to portray any disrespect towards Michael Fields, whom you just heard, as I do respect him. But I believe that if you read between the lines and really study the case, go through the reality as to what may have happened, given the evidence we do have, the Hummer is a major piece of the case, and will be if brought to trial. Now, on to the next guy, whom I picked something up from also, Bill Moore. In the MBI. Uh, I was a task force agent at the Metropolitan Bureau of Investigation. Um, I was in charge of the electronic surveillance unit. I remember her phone did ping in some of those areas along the way. What do those pings tell somebody like you? Well, they can establish a movement pattern. Um, they can corroborate someone's testimony, or it can you know, blow a hole in their testimony. So that's, you, you collect all the data and... It was this bridge here? Them. Under the theory that they had a fight at home, mm -hmm. you know, she was taking control of or whatever, and he was leaving and coming back to his dad's house maybe to confide, he would come this way, east to west, and the driver's side would be flipped around. So to show you his rationale here, I got Google Earth and I got the points mapped from east to west. His east is where his residence is and all the way on the west is where his parents' place is. They found her phone in the dead center, okay? So he's suggesting if he's going from his place over to his parents, crosses the bridge at Bell Isle, throws the phone over, and then goes to his parents. And I remember it wasn't in a very deep part of the lake. Because they were able to get the, uh, the, the, the phone was still registering. That's how they found it. So that's why I think they were slowing down and, and tossed it. Tossed it. I and another task force agent were discussing it. About sure, the cut through. About the cut through and where it could be dumped. And uh, sure enough, they went, went right to it. Why were you looking at that bridge or that lake? Based on where Dale lived and where he was going at that time. But looking at the grand scheme, if you're looking from the air, looking down, that bridge in that city was a needle in a haystack, it seemed. I remember how surprised we were that you, that you guys found that phone. Did you track his cell phone? Uh, I can't, you know, go into the details of the investigation on that side of it. You can't tell me what technology you used on Dale? There was technology used that has never been used before in an Orange County case. Can you tell me what that technology is? No. How come? The records are sealed by court. On what technology you used? On the search warrant to get to utilize the technology, yes. after Parker disappeared, Orlando police released this video of her Humvee at a red light around 8.55 p.m. on November 17, 2011. It was captured just a mile from where her car was found. Police were hoping it would trigger someone's memory. So what do we know? Michelle dropped her twins off at Dale Smith's place of residence between 4 and 4.30 p.m. Video camera footage showing her black H3 pulling into the complex is there, per Mark Najim, Dale Smith's attorney. Her phone was last signaled, turned off at approximately 8 p.m., per an article I found, where it was later found at Belle Isle. The vehicle, the H3, as we can tell on the cam, had its sticker removed. Less than, in, in this video, is less than one mile from where the H3 was later found by authorities the next day, 1118. However, 
I want you to take a look at this article here. I believe that after seen on the cam here at 8.55, the driver took the H3 to the Walden Apartments soon thereafter, where it was eventually found. I'm estimating between 9 and 9.15 p.m. Look at this article. Mom's Hummer seen day before found, so that it was seen on the day she went missing. It's been almost a week, and there's still no sign of the missing mother of three, Michelle Parker. An eyewitness claimed she saw Parker's Hummer parked in an apartment complex as early as Thursday night, which was 24 hours before it was found on Friday afternoon. So there's a lady that was out walking her dog that claimed she saw the vehicle as early as that night. According to a Seminole County Sheriff report last year, Parker told deputies she called for help over a fight with the ex-fiance who left her stranded at Universal Studios. Parker told investigators that Dale Smith became violent with her, took off in her vehicle, and even took her iPhone. See, this is just showing the history. Um, back to this eyewitness here. Um, an eyewitness told WFTV she saw Parker's Hummer on a curb at the Walden Palms condominium complex about 10.30 p.m. Thursday when she was walking her dog. This is only hours after cell, Parker's cell phone went dead, investigators said. The same day, she appeared on a taped episode of The People's Court with her ex-fiance. She was wearing a silver cross necklace, a detail revealed Wednesday, jeans, and a Florida Gator zip-up hoodie. That afternoon, Parker sent her brother a text message which suggested she was in the Waterford Lakes area of East Orange County. Several hours later, at about 8 p.m., Parker's phone pinged in the area of Oak Ridge Road in South Orlando, and the phone was shut off in that area. The phone hasn't been located. Neither has a necklace, OPT officials said Friday, which we do know the phone was eventually located about a month later. The next day, police found Parker's H3 Hummer in the Walden Parts complex. The decals for her mobile tanning business were removed from the windows. Here, let's focus on the navy blue marks that I have here. What we do know to begin the day, we have Michelle on camera at KFC at 1222 p.m. Okay, then she runs some errands for her mom to get some color in other products. She goes to her mom's salon here between 1 and 2 p.m. and tells her mom that she's going to go take a nap. Okay. However, then we fast forward to her 11-year-old son getting out of school and Michelle wasn't home. The mom and brother became alarmed. Michelle's brother then texts Michelle and Michelle's phone responds with one word, Waterford. Okay. Around the same time, separate and apart, Michelle's mom contacts dale wasn't able to get him so then she ends up calling dale's mom who eventually did get a hold of dale so she could talk to um, yvonne michelle's mom in regards to her concern for michelle dale said i'm not sure where she's at she uh, told me she was gonna go shopping in uh waterford okay which is right here so michelle's phone sent it which i do not believe it was michelle I believe it was Dale on Michelle's phone. Michelle's mom, Yvonne, talking to him on the phone, where Dale personally himself suggests that she told him that she was going to go shopping in Waterford, okay? I don't believe Michelle ever went here, okay? I don't know what she did in between. Did she take a nap? Who knows? But what we do know, and it is on camera, she does arrive to Dale's place of rev residence, okay? Which is right here. Okay, because it is on camera, um, per his defense attorney, uh, Mark Najim, does say that the blue, black Hummer around 4 to 4.30 is seen showing here. This is the last place she's known to be. Her twins were dropped safely off with Dale. He's claiming that she left and he doesn't know where she went, okay? And I believe the evidence says otherwise, all right? That's important to keep in mind, okay? He knows... That everybody knows Michelle was coming to drop the kids off. I mean, the kids are evidence of that. They're safely at his house. Okay? He knows he's going to be the first suspect looked at because he's the ex-fiance. Of course, there's a history of turmoil. Okay? He knows they're going to be looking at him. All right? Now, do I believe there's motive? Absolutely. He took her to a civil suit over a $5,000 loan, wherein the judge ended up panning out they each owed $2,500. Okay. So Dale was found responsible for half, and so was Michelle. I'm sure that made him mad because who knows how much of it he had paid off. You know, he was went out and got the loan because he thought things were going well. He's trying to seek all that money so he can pay the loan off. He doesn't want to pay for $2,500 of it if he hadn't to that point yet. Who wants to put money towards a ring that's no longer going to mean what it was meant to be when you first purchased it? You get what I'm saying, okay? They also had a custody battle back in 2009 where 
Michelle apparently won, and he's only getting visitation with his kids. And looking back now, after this, he hasn't let the kids see Yvonne. Why wasn't? Why doesn't he want them to have a relationship with Michelle's parents? Further, he picked them up and then he moved them to Tennessee where they lived for quite a while. Why move away? I'm not saying that proves anything, but why move away? I know, I believe I understand that he does live back in the Central Florida area now. But still, from my understanding, the grandparents, both Brad and um, Yvonne Parker, Stuart, want to have a relationship with their grandparents. Why isn't he allowing this? Okay? Why isn't he allowing this? Now, that's just circumstantial things. It doesn't prove that he's guilty. Okay? Um, but we do know that her phone was last seen at 8 p.m. Okay? Pinged. And it was found in Belle Isle. Okay? We do know that for a fact. Okay? So she was last seen there. And that's all we know for facts. There's other things we can place in here. Her phone was found here. And I believe it was turned off here, died at the water. Okay? But here's the other thing. The next time frame that we do know of, 8 p.m. here, okay, is at this intersection. Coming up this way is where the Hummer is spotted at 8.55 p.m., okay? So 8 p.m. here, 8.55 p.m. there, all right? So here's, here, here's my theory, all right? He knows that everybody's going to know that she was last seen at his place dropping the kids off, okay? The kids are evidence of that. She probably goes inside, drops off the kids with him, okay, and then goes out to talk to mom before she leaves. Some type of altercation when they were talking in the vehicle took place. He reacted, probably injured her, knew that he would never see his kids again because of his history, domestic battery like three times, and he was court-martialed and removed from the Marines for the same type of domestic battery, okay? So this guy's got a violent history. Plus, you hear him on court TV, Michelle stating such, okay? I believe the act took place in the vehicle, all right? At that point, he's got his two kids inside. And even if he severely injured her, he to himself thought that he had to take her out completely. Because if she gets to the hospital, she gets to her parents, and she's got a significant gash or something on her face, that violence is going to prove to a court that he's not fit to handle to see his kids. Remember, kids are the motive here, all right? money all right therefore i believe the crime scene took place in the hummer and she never left him there that is why the hummer became the biggest thing to get rid of all right now think about this for a second if it was a stranger if it was like a trafficking thing or just some homeless guy on drugs or someone that had a real high sexual desire they're not going to care about the vehicle as long as they get out and get away that's all that matters Think about it. Why is the Hummer found all the way over here when we last know she was seen here? Okay. Well, that doesn't mean that it was Dale. Okay. If it was a stranger, why is the stranger going to scrape the, go through all the hard work of driving it through here and all the way up in here or whatever route he took? Get away from the evidence, man. If you got her when she was in her vehicle, do what you got to do, then get away from the car and her. Why was the Hummer, why was it so necessary to get rid of the Hummer and even go so far as to take the decal off? I argue that a stranger wouldn't do that. Why would they? Think about it. But let's put this perspective hat on, okay? Let's say Dale does do it. He reacts. He injures her significantly. Maybe even knocks her unconscious, concussion or something. He freaks out. He knows this is an end-all, be-all. Now I'm definitely not going to see my kids. She's going to go to the hospital, and he just goes all the way, right? But at that point, he has the black Hummer with the sticker sitting in his driveway. What does he do? Okay? He knows the family's going to be all over it, okay? And he knows the first thing the Bolo's going to say is look out for a black Hummer with a glow sticker on the back. All right? Why? Because that's exactly what happened. So he knows to buy himself time to get this vehicle out of here, He's got to get rid of that glow sticker, okay? When Yvonne first speaks to him, he says that he's at his dad's warehouse. I don't know where the warehouse is. I've tried everything, even contacting family in the case to try to find out. Why was he at his dad's warehouse? Is it this spot behind the house? And why do I say that? Think about this. If you're going to take off stickers off the back of a Hummer, you wouldn't want to do it outside. 
Okay, why? Because it's an odd enough thing that maybe at the time someone walking by or driving by will see it, not think anything about it. But if they find out later that there's a black vehicle with a sticker on the back, they're going to remember seeing somebody scraping off a sticker because it's a weird thing. It's not something you see every day. He pulls it into cover at a warehouse and does it there. Okay. Does that make sense? Right? And then shortly after, after um, the case, early December, I believe, um, they actually got a search warrant here at Dale's parents' place. And they actually searched the, I believe they searched the shed back behind the house, which could be the warehouse. I'm not sure. Um, I won't go all the way in. But this here, I don't know. No, that's not a warehouse. I don't know where dad's warehouse is. But they, there's pictures showing where they're searching the canal here. Okay. So they have some suspicion, and you know we have they have cell phone evidence. They're not going to tell us that. They have some suspicion to go so far as around here, okay? So the whole idea is that they know Michelle's phone, they found it here, okay? And I'm sure with the pinging information, which led them right to it, all right? Well, if you look at the map here, Dale lives right here, the last place she was seen. Her phone, we know she's still missing, was thrown into the water intentionally, okay? Also... This is what I think is going to take to find Michelle. That's how he gets rid of evidence. That's his M.O., so to say, his modus operandi, his mode of operating. He throws the phone in here. What's he going to do with her body, okay? And not to be morbid here. I'm sorry if her family listens to this. I mean it with all due respect, sincerely. He knows they're on to him. He doesn't have time to, you know, burn a body or or to dismember and, you know, think, not to get morbid, but if you really think about it, he doesn't have time for that. He knows they're going to come hot and especially on his trail, okay? He has to get rid of it ASAP, all right? And I believe when we come over here to where we see this, um, we see the uh, Hummer on camera here, we see it rolling in from this direction, okay? That's at 855. So when you see these purple lines and these roads, these are all the different major roads and all the way in there. And drove them all the way out where he could potentially um, have went. You know, because we know the phone's here at 8 to be coming in this direction. These are guaranteed directions of the vehicles at these exact times. 8.55 pulling up. I believe this is what was found the next day. But with that article, remember the lady with the dog saw it here at 10.30. I believe at 8.55 here, he went straight in and then parked. Okay. Probably left the vehicle there between... 8.50, what, 9 and 9.15, I would suggest. And then the lady saw it at 10.30, okay? But here's the other thing. How the hell do you get from here back to here? I'm guessing this is where his father comes into play. I'm guessing that his father, why? Because who else would you trust? Okay, and if you'll, I'll show here on the screen. His dad got charged for growing marijuana and stuff a couple years later. And the mom, we can tell, is a little suspicious. You know, maybe she covered the kids. Who knows? Um, but how the hell do you get back from here to here? Okay. And the other thing here. Look look, look where he's putting the vehicle. All the way over here. Completely the other side of where he, where, where he lives. But also look at this here, too. Even opposite of where he suggested Michelle told him she was going to be. And where Michelle, air quotes, texted him here. He wants you to believe everything happened over here from his knowledge or what he supposedly knows. Meanwhile, this is the last plan we know she was seen. Her phone was eventually found here. Law enforcement conducted a search at his parents' place in the canal, which in the way was probably corroborated with phone evidence, which I did find on one article. Um, it was last pinged on Oak Ridge Road, which is this black line here, which is where I believe the tower is. Okay, The tower is right here. This is how they were able to find it. They went to water near here to look. They ended up finding that baby right there. Okay. Then there was a tip in 2015 that came in. Right here. They searched this like here. Well, look at it. Look at these purple routes. It makes sense. Okay. This could be a potential option. In 2012, they searched right here and didn't find anything either. That one's pretty small. So what I did is I drew out all these potential avenues. This is where his parents live. He could have left out this way, this way. And remember, this is all based on scene and camera right here. Coming in from this direction. This has to happen, okay? He could have came in from here. 
and I marked an area right here, which to me is very intriguing. Look, it's like a car lot. But think about this at, what, 8.30 at night? Come down here. Look at this. It's a shed. You can pull right in here, okay? Right off with purple line. Pull right in here. Imagine this in our dark. It's a place of business, right? Imagine this at nighttime. There's a main road. These cars aren't going to be here. There's no cameras. This is 2011. Look at all this area. You park right up here. Nobody's around. You go right over here. And there's water, right? That's a potential option. I think a low risk option. Look at that. Nighttime back here, business place at nighttime. That's an option. Um, over here, also, I believe, is another option, which I'll give you a view of this here. Why do I say it's an option? Look at this overgrowth here and picture it at. 8.50 at night when it's really dark. No one's coming here or there. You park over. They don't know if you have a flat tire. Look both directions. I mean, look at this. Remember Kaylee Anthony was found right next to her house in even te Texas EquiSearch rocked right over her? I lived in Florida for a time, and I'll tell you, this stuff's everywhere. I mean, look at these options, okay? And these aren't areas that I believe they've searched. This is just me using his likely potential path of travel, given what we know. Um... And I don't believe he went back this way towards his house, and I didn't mark that because we know the phone's here at 8, thrown into the water. I'm guessing throw the phone in the water, then you eventually get rid of the body somewhere, and then you drop the car off here where it was found, okay? And you light the you um, tear the glow sticker off of the back because when you're transferring from her here to here, you know there's going to be a bolo out for a black Hummer with the white sticker off. So you take the sticker off to conceal yourself a little bit, and then you can blend in if at possible you can, because you know they're looking for that sticker, right? If it was a stranger, why the hell would they take the sticker off and come all the way over here? Oh, because Michelle was over here and he grabbed, really? How do you defend the sticker taking off? That's somebody that knew her family would be giving the bolo for that. Think about it, okay? Now, these purple roads, I'm not saying definitively, but all these are different options. We know they've searched here, back here behind the house, and right here. And I'm, I've tried to find other search avenues. My whole point is, if we can really find, and I'm sure law enforcement has other timelines, but if we can, if there's a checklist created to where we know it's been searched here, 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 if you look at all these potential options, right? I'm not saying I don't have the resources for that. I wish I did. But eventually you're going to be able to find something. I mean, these are all possible options here. I'm not saying law enforcement didn't do that. But if you follow the logic here, that this is where we know the phone ping. They have that. Puts him right here. His parents is right there. He's not going to put it anywhere too close to his parents, right? But to me, these are too close. That's too dangerous, right? He's going to want to get away from it. He's not going to go up here. He's not going to go down here because now you start to get into the metropolitan really a lot of public. Look at all these, okay? It's going to be somewhere up in this U here because he's pulling in here. I believe after the phone, he disposed of her body somewhere in here, somewhere in here, okay? And then we see him pulling up here at the light, and I believe she's out of the vehicle at that point. Okay, so somewhere in between here. And I showed you a couple options there. But I wonder if there's like a checklist, you know. And some of these I didn't mark like these because there's a lot of places, a lot of houses and stuff. Like he's not going to risk that. Um, but if you think about it, he didn't have time to put a lot of thought into it. I don't think it was premeditated. I think it was like in the heat of passion. Um, so I don't think this would have been something that was long picked out. And I think maybe even watching that people's court that day triggered him, made him snap, right? Um, but this is my biggest fear, okay? Get this. This is what scares me. There's another case. Um, a girl from Akasi. They believe she may have been put here in Lake Papapka, okay? Which is really weird if you look at this stuff. I don't know if you guys are any of that conspiracy stuff. <laughs> I mean, come on. Look at this. What is this stuff? Like, something fell in there. Cement or, like, I mean, this is just some odd... Looks like a 
semi trailer and truck, doesn't it? I don't know. It doesn't look natural, I can tell you that. Kind of weird. But no, if you look at this lake, I'll show you here why this would be a bad choice, okay? A puppy there just chuck full of gators. Is there a, a specific spot that that haunts you? I, I would have to say Lake Apopka, uh, just because just how swampy and, and how enormous that area is. Um, you know, that's, I think, one area that probably has not been thoroughly as it, I mean, they thoroughly as they could at the time um, conducted searches. But I think that area, just because, like I said, it's so swampy, would be the, the prime area I wish that we could do a little more in. Tracy Ocasio, who's another Florida woman who a couple years prior went missing in the OC area. Um, but in terms of this case, you think like, oh, no, I wouldn't go that far, right? But knowing what we now know about this lake, okay, I put it onto MapQuest. We went to Bella Isle where the phone's found to Apopka, Florida, which is here at the lake. It would take at max 32 minutes. So then we go here. How long does it take to go from here until where the Hummer's found? Get this. 22, 25. What do those numbers add up to be? Damn near 855. <laughs> so is is that what happened? I'm not alleging that. But what I'm saying is you drop the phone off up at here, you could hypothetically go up to Lake Apopka, do whatever you got to do, and come back down and be caught on camera coming up this road at 8.55. Damn near exactly. But what does that also mean? It means that the phone's here at 8. He could pretty much go anywhere... Here, so let's mark that anywhere here to here and then back to 855. That's almost dead on, okay? So if he's going to go any more out here, you know, maybe then he can only go this far. You get, you get what I'm saying, okay? But if you do all this, let's say he goes out here instead, and then he goes up here, and then eventually comes in. You get what I'm saying. But eventually, you can create a search area, right? We know they've searched this one, that one. But I'm sure police have other footage. His M.O. was dropping the phone in the lake. He didn't have much time to plan. He's going to go to a body of water where he gets rid of her. Hopefully not up here, okay? Because that area looks pretty hard to get into. But one of these smaller ones, man, I would think you're going to be able to find that Forty Gator jacket or that that um, that necklace. Heck, you never know. You have these magnet magnet fishermen go into some of these um, little bridges and throw it in. Someone could find that cross necklace. I wish police would work could work with the public and begin to create a checklist of these different places. You know, heck, I would love to take part in that. She's got to be somewhere around here, guys. And on top of that, if, you're, if her kids are listening, if you do know something or something was said while you guys were growing up, don't be afraid. People will protect you. Okay? And I'm not going to go get sued by Dale Smith because this is not defamation. I'm using the evidence of the case and logic. Okay? The guy didn't open his word. He understands his rights. He pled the fifth. That doesn't make him guilty, but he knew anything he said could be incriminating. All right? His dad's suspicious character. All right? We just saw in the laundry case. It's harder when it's your son. Right? He's our, He got busted for doing something. He had to be someone that he trusted to pick him up and take him back. Who else would it be? It. It's his father. Okay? In my opinion... Dale did whatever he did to her inside of her Hummer. He knew he had to get rid of that and put it as far away from his place as possible. He suggested and tried to create this narrative that it happened up here in Waterford, but it didn't happen anywhere near there, okay? He takes the sticker off so no one notices the glow sticker that everyone would be looking for at that point. He's caught coming in back here at 8.55. Um, of at 8.55, now the thing is, is I believe the Hummer without the sticker proves that it's Dale because if it was a stranger doing whatever they had to do, they would have no reason to throw her phone in here and then come in here without the sticker on the back. 
why would a stranger with no personal connection have any care or iota to do that? It's somebody that knows it would be pinned on him. They're already going to look at him because that's where she was last at. Given their toxic history, the show that was on TV that day, he knew he had to get rid of it all the way over here. Okay? You're not coming down here because it's too residential. You got Universal and you got Disney. Okay? He's not doing that. Right? Not going anywhere near here. Mom lives over here. The shop's over here. This is where I'm sure Michelle lived over here somewhere. I mean, she was eventually supposed to work at the barn here. Okay? He's not going anywhere over there. So what does he do? Literally completely opposite as far as he can. Okay? Phone here. Her body's somewhere around here. Has to be. Let's hope it's not a popka. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I hope this raised some awareness. And I don't know if anybody stuck with me this long. This is... Like 25 minutes longer than I anticipated, but until next time, everyone, uh, mind you, out. What's he telling those kids? That's my main concern. What's he telling those kids? Side note, I also did want to mention that I did see the reward fund for this case, for any information leading to it, um, is up over $200,000 now. Apparently, there was an anonymous donor that came forward not too long ago. Um, I think that's important to include. I didn't even know that. Um, and then also, I will attach the Michelle Parker documentary in the video description, as well as the Tracy Acacia one that I featured in here as well.